Well, hello there. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time it is for you around the world. I don't know. You're you're likely probably here because the title lent to your curiosity. Like, hey, I got a loan from either one of those two. I hey, that's me. Uh, yeah. That's me. All I can say and all I'm going to say is I myself had a loan from one of those that are listed there, ex company. You see the two credit American credit acceptance, excuse me, an American credit acceptance. So mine was American credit acceptance. This is going to be a two part or three part or however part this. <laughs> needs to be this video, but uh, I had to vent my frustration somewhere so and share my experience somewhere. So uh, that's why I'm here. Um, today, basically, we're going to talk about loans and retail installment contracts, and we're also going to talk about substance and form. We're going to talk about those three things without being too expressive or too, you know, saying too much information, but just some information on how to distinguish the two, um, whether you have a loan, whether you did a retail installment contract, because a lot of times consumers are not aware. Consumers are not aware of some of the you know, culprits, good points is there, <laughs> but culprits, we'll go back to that, and uh, possible things in the contract that could make you a uh, break you, break, break, break you, <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I laugh, I don't know about y'all, but usually I laugh when, uh, to keep my pressure down, <laughs> okay, so that's why you hear me like, I don't think it's funny. I'm just, let me keep my pressure down a little bit. So let me get a giggle in there. It's like a medicine. And for those of you who ask me, girl, why don't you ever show your face or get on the video? You you hear your voice, but you never get on the video. Well, a lot of times, you know, you want to get on the video. You want to, of course, like you go outside, you're addressing the public or you're addressing people. You want to look decent and, uh, you know, get ready. Take your bath, do your hair, you know. Make for sure you have everything straight with your, your your hair, your face. I don't wear makeup, but whatever. And a lot of times I'm just not prepared. I'm just, I'm chilling it all like the rest of us. You know, I'm sitting at home. So if you don't mind, <laughs> I hope you will be thankful that I'm just sharing this information without having to see me. Maybe one day, maybe one day. But uh, let's let's operate from a vibe right now, from a like, Hello, how are you from a personality? They will looks they will get to that. Hopefully we can surpass our shadow if we are. But getting back on point, um, we're gonna talk about two things here: retail installment contracts and loans. There are two different things. I am not an attorney, so don't uh take my advice like you know, just just say by your side, just okay. I'm just gonna listen to her experience. But if you are looking for further counsel, it's best you always get uh, your own research going and always that you get a legal professional. I'm going to throw in a couple of government. <laughs> I'm going to throw in some regulatory agencies. Also, you can check um, some of the things on there that can help you out to describe the two uh, are the three things we're talking about. Substance and form, very important. Retail installment contract. And the last one was uh, the loan, the actual lender, the loan. So on those uh, sites, the Department of Protection and or the Prote Department of Financial Protection and Innovation, I'm probably saying it out of order, but it's DPFI, that's for the state of California, which I am in, but you probably have your own in the state you're in, which is probably name different. That's fine, but find it. They are the 
formerly the Department of Business Oversight, but they are supposed to make for sure that the licensee is uh, has a license to begin with that is active uh, and uh, that they are doing what they're supposed to be doing as far as in business in California, servicing consumers. The next one is CFBP, California Financial Borough Protection. This is also for Cal, uh, no, that's not for California. It's consumer, pardon me, consumer um, CF Financial Board of Protection. That's, I believe, a federal agency for that's for all states. And uh, you'll see these as I'm, I'm showing them up and I'm showing their contacts and everything. And again, uh, there's, they go through all 50 states, so they help everyone and um, all 50 states. And the next one, make a sweet, long, sweet, short story, substance over form. And we'll get, there's a reason I'm saying that we'll get into that. That is a, um, I'm, like I said, I'm not a lawyer. I'm just reading the basic of this. You would have the scope of this, uh, substance and form, predatory lending, things like that. You would definitely need a lawyer's opinion. I'm just getting to the top, the basics of this, because there's so much, there's so much involved that uh, me personally, just showing you the basis where you can start would not be big enough scope to dig into and to apply according to your own um, situation, where or how this may affect you based on these principles. So when we say substance of a form, uh, what I am understand to what that means is we are taking the entirety of the transaction and looking at it. Okay, we are just not taking the face. So if we say retail installment contract, which a lot of auto uh, people, a lot of auto dealers do, they sell the contract and assign it to a financial lender. So the finance cost could be very high. It could it could go anywhere all the way up into the probably over a hundred. Okay, because it's finance. It's not called you serious. You serious is when a lender needs, this is the state of the California again, this is in my state. You serious means when a lender needs a license to service a loan, he can use any rate that he wants. Without a license, he's not allowed to just use any rate he wants. I think it's conservative in California, up to 10% alone. But again, you, you look into this and you can get a lawyer. This is what I've researched so far. But uh, don't confuse that with, oh, hey, dang, they had my rate at 27.99. They did you serious, like I did. <laughs> don't confuse that. But that doesn't, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that your case does not have merit. It's just don't, don't lean on that so heavily. And <laughs> an investigator, a regulator is supposed to use all of the, uh, apply everything thoroughly, but, uh, you know, uh, where, where that stands is in that investigator's mindset and how he chooses to investigate that. So the reason I say substance and form and 24%, because there's a lot of people, including people with good credit that's paying these high rates and that they, they just like me, you serious? No, it, it's not you serious. Because let me explain to you, it's a retail installment contract from what I'm told. So it's not you serious. But let me also explain to you, that is just the face when you take, that is just the form rather, just the form. When you take all the other things into account, is there a pre-existing relationship? Was the contract assigned immediately after? Was, uh, is there any other unregulated besides this, although not regulated, there's no other, uh, where anywhere else that are, are, I see risk retail installment contract can be regulated. You know, it's all these things that follow into that are, I see also known as credit contract that doesn't necessarily mean that 
because that finance rate of 27.9 or whatever was charged, they're clear and free. But the thing is, it has to be investigated and it has to be looked at appropriately from an investigator to see everything. Um, what's happening is um, you can, the Department of, uh, the Department of Financial Innovation and Protection, Department of, I'm probably missing the word again, but you, you can look it up and see. The, most of these places need thousands of people to come unto them, I suppose, and say, hey, this is an issue with this particular, with X company, subprime lender, uh, subprime auto lender. If you're just one, they probably won't pursue your case. They probably will tell you, we don't do individual cases. Doesn't mean your case doesn't have merit, such and such and such. But we're we're just not um, going to pursue that. I don't know. Everyone's different. I'm not going to go into what happened to me because I just can't. But I'm just saying everyone is different. But, uh, you know, in saying that, there is a lot of people with my, uh, in California, that I've seen, that I've researched off of the CFPB side, that has issues with between these subprime lenders, okay? So there's one subprime lender who doesn't have a license. Okay, and like I said, that's you serious. And that subprime lender is quick to say, we use retail installment contracts. But DPFI at one instance says, and reiterates, that don't think just because you use credit sales or retail installment contracts, or you purchase them, that you're clear and free, because you're not. But the thing is, you have to have many, many, many people. And I put their, their number, this is the perfect time, at 1216. The names of the organizations can be looked at at the end of the video and further can be researched on the internet. Financial Innovation Protection, Department of Financial Protection and Innovation. Could be saying it out of order. Cue the address, cue the number right here. And if you feel that the, something like that happened to you, although it was a retail installment contract between these subprime lenders, X company, whoever they are, submit your complaint. <laughs> and you date them. Submit your complaint. Because if it, many of us, instead of just talking about it and just going to CFPB, submit our complaint and show that you feel the same way, what happens is maybe they will go into it faster to look at it faster. But if it's just one like me or two or three or maybe even 70 or whatever, that's not enough people. So I'm thinking a lot of these subprime lenders make a lot of money and they know they're good and they can just throw up. Well, that's not enough people complaining, you know, so they get away with this crazy rate. and this RIC contract, which is not, uh, it's not regulated by the CFL, which is the California financial, um, law, the CFI, CFI, CFL, the California financial law. You, you can see it up. It's not regulated by that, but henceforth, they're going to do these RICs, retail installment contracts that pretty much take them. There's the loophole to take them out of the CFL law. So the you serious is like what to them? It's like nothing because they could get this finance and get this here. That's what they figure. And that's what's going on. Not a lot of people know that. And not a lot of people are complaining about it because consumers don't know that. Okay. Now, if you get a loan, like some of the summer private lenders, not naming one in particular, a loan, that's a different story according to each of your state. Each of your states has different you serious laws. So if you get a loan, a loan is different from a retail installment contract. Henceforth, now you can say you're free because your loan, your states have different set amounts on how high of a percentage they can charge you. And notwithstanding, to say all of that, there's also predatory lending. 
Now, between both of them, you know, like I said, you need a legal professional because I am not one. If they did that to you, there's probably something else going on right there, you know, that's within that contract that only uh, someone with legal standing could really thoroughly look at and tell you that because it doesn't mean your case has merit because the the government agency doesn't want to investigate it. The government agency, from what I read, can, at their discretion, choose not to because it's just not enough people that's complaining about it. So our, they just chose, they just don't want it because they just don't want it. And what can you do about it? <laughs> Nothing with them. You can go get a lawyer. You can go... Um, and make sure you know how much lawyers cost because I heard a horrible story. This was terrible. Someone got a personal injury suit of 100000 And then she only, her and her son, they only got something like eleven, uh, 30000 from that. Not eleven, thirty thousand 30000 from that. So your attorney is only allowed to charge you so much on the personal injury. And he does. But then there's the hours he's worked. There's the expert witness. There's this that you needed. There's that that we needed to contract. There's this over here. And then when you add all that on top of the uh, only a percentage amount of personal injury, what you want was great, but you don't get it. Like if someone won 50000 to add insult unto injury, those fees will probably be eaten up by the settlement fee, which is a percentage and contingency, aside from all the other fees. So if you want like 50,000, then you get in five. And I've heard those, this fire stories. So just be aware because it could be that you can, uh, you know, get to do something or uh, get your money or whatever, get it back, whatever. But just be aware before you go into it, what to do. The best thing I find to do, you find a product where someone wants to cheat you and harm you and just don't give a crap about what happens in life after they got your signature don't do it don't do it i think i'd rather at this point save as much as i can for a car if one comes to me by the good graces of god another one or something like that then fine but I, to get my next vehicle or additional i would rather just save for it as much as I can. Some people cannot do that. They need the vehicle because they are experiencing a need just to go where they need to go. They can't, where they live, in my case, is so far out that they can't, um, there's no other reliable transportation. And if you got it taken advantage of like that uh, by using, by not knowing by not having the knowledge, by not seeing, you know, being in a tight spot at the wrong time for them to take advantage of you, then unfortunately, you know, that's what happens. And it happens to a lot of consumers and even consumers with a very high credit score. So we really got to pay attention to uh, what everything is there. And I've been uh, recently also reading some stuff on um, Truth and Lending Act and watching YouTube Truth and Lending Act is also something you want to look at uh, when you, boy, when you come at them and you say sticker prices, you know, show me the sticker price. They come back at you and say, well, this is it. And if you don't want to deal with that, we don't want the car. You say, fine, walk off. There's always somewhere else you're going to find something better. One moment. Boy, these sonic booms out here are crazy. And they're, they're like, uh, these jets, there's a lot of training exercises out here. And it literally looks like you're having 50 earthquakes in one, at one time. So God keep us stable, make this house hold up. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, there I go with that laugh. That's just to calm my nerve. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, and there will be probably a part two if I can, um, I think more needs to be done about this. I think that uh, we need to really address this as a society. Because if you look at a lot of recent news reports, a lot of Americans and a lot of people are getting into debt even worse because they're getting all these high uh, finance car loans that these dealers are just throwing at them. Good credit or not. 
and uh, they are not able to, you know, keep up with them. Car gets repossessed, the credit gets messed up, they 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 are in debt. They get even more in debt, and then the the car turns upside down, where um they own more in it than what it's worth. And this is for this is it's just bad. So just remember that this retail installment contract that's a finance that is not dictated by usury law, although it isn't, there is, and I'm not mentioning no company names, there is a way that can be proven that you're trying to evade the usury law by using the RS, RIC, the contract. Yeah. And uh, the other one is a loan. A, when you get a loan th by your state, they have to abide by the usury law. So there's deception, misconceptions, uh, predatory lendings, all that stuff in there. And those are some important things to look up. But always over all of it, substance over form. Remember those words. Put them in your complaint. Register your complaint with the DPFI, with the CFPB, um, with your state's local attorney general. Register your c complaint if you want to. Um, I don't know how it's turned out, but there, there's enough of us to go in to register a complaint. Hopefully, it's been years now. <laughs> Hopefully, something will be done. You know, some people can't walk. They really do need a car. They're in, um, you have to understand, yeah, we understand that. We all need a vehicle somewhere at some point. Not all of us can, you know, we're not walking everywhere. So that's, for this part one, I think it will just be a part one because I can't go extensively into what happened on my behalf as far as my experience because it's just not something I can shout aloud. Uh, you can look at the subprime lenders. You can ask which, each one of them, what do you use? Or I see, or do you use a, are you just an outright lender? Are you a loan? You can look at that. But it's very, two of the same connections that'll get you the vehicle, but different proportionately, but at the same time, uh, can be fought, but it's going to take, it's going to take, it's, I don't know if it's, you got to have the right fighter. That's it, the right investigator, the right person that doesn't have any bias and is really going to look at the facts, not just what they want to look at. All right, so that's it. That's my little spiel. The, you see those numbers? You can um, take and pause it to look at that, look at your contract, go for it. Remember, you human too. You, you have needs too. So no one can, it's just like, hey, Let's get her without the gun, but we have a creative way <laughs> to rob or take that money. But remember, you you God's child too, and you human too. Nobody ain't told you today, you God's child too, and you human too. You got to live, breathe, eat, sleep, have love, and and be, uh, that helps you to be the best you can be. You're, you're not a nothing. You're, you are just like, that same person that thinks they should take from you because you're nothing, but you're not. You're everything to the Lord. You're everything. God bless you. Thank you for listening. And I hope everything benefits you the way the Lord wants it to. Thank you.